this is the game that Jordan Travis has been waiting for. This is the game where you have to shine. This is the game where you have to take it over. This is the one. You're a superstar player on a team with a ton of weapons, and you have been waiting to be in a position to knock off the best team in this league. Clemson has been unquestionably the best team in this league for far too long from our vantage point and certainly from any of our players' vantage points, right? So this is why, like in the NFL, you bet on the quarterback in big games. I mean, we do this all the time. Years ago, I used to laugh at all the business analogies that Colin Cowherd would use on his show every day, that everything was like a used car or a hospital or insurance or something. All right, that's fine. That was his shtick. And he did it well, and it was absurd, but it worked for him. But what he was right about was when he would always say, when you get your schedule at the start of the year, as a fan of any NFL franchise, how many of the best quarterbacks do you face and dictate your win-loss record based on when and who you play at that position specifically? Yes. Nothing else. How many of the top-tier quarterbacks do you face? Because in that league – Good quarterback play dictates terms in the biggest games. I think he's right. It's why Dallas Cowboy fans, despite having the best personnel in football right now, don't really trust that they're going to win the Super Bowl because they don't really trust Dak. Now, maybe he'll prove them wrong, and they certainly have a great shot. They are very talented. Yes, they are. All right. Jordan, this applies to you this weekend, this Saturday. You're not calling him Dak Prescott, are you? No. I'm calling him an elite quarterback that has a chance to prove it, to take yet another step. And all he's done is prove his detractors wrong in his time at Florida State. One of those detractors was me. He has proven me and everybody else who thought that he wasn't a real quarterback wrong. He was, at one point, a guy who was a one-read, get him out of the pocket, let him utilize his ability to make you miss in space kind of dude. Then he became better than that. Then the pre-snap became really good. Then mechanics got better. Then he started to attack the middle of the field down the scene. Then he became more complete right before our eyes. And thus you had former players, former coaches, anybody that could get in front of a mic or on Twitter to talk about what they were watching, which was the transformation from a really good athlete playing quarterback to a quarterback who happens to be a really good athlete. And that was cool because we watched the hard work that he put in to get to that point. And we had the great fortune of talking to a Tony Tokars and talking back when he was here uh, to Arizona State's head coach. (laughs) We're still talking about sprouting and everything else. Indeed. Yeah. 29 to nothing. They lost at home. Truffle Um, fries. Yeah. So Dillingham. Uh, believed in him, and and we when we listened to that, and then we listened to Mike Norvell, and we listened to Alex Atkins, and then we watched it for ourselves, and we saw the way the players responded, and it's been awesome to watch that. It's been really really cool. I think it's it's really one of the more fun stories that I've had the privilege of covering because I have not seen a player transform to this degree. I've seen guys get a lot better. I've seen guys go from being uh, marginal contributors uh, in the first year or two of their careers to graduating and thinking, oh, we are really going to miss that dude. He's a good football player. We've seen lots of stories like that. But at quarterback, you don't see it as often. And so here you go. He got better and better and better. Then all of a sudden, before we knew it, he was a Heisman candidate before the season. He was single-handedly winning games against rivals in prime time and turning the program's fortunes around, and they added all around him. And then they go and beat LSU, and he has the half that he does. In the second half of that game, when you had to have it, with a nation watching, down to start the third quarter, what does that guy go and do? He's as efficient and smart with the football. He's making plays left and right. He is elevating the team to another place. And along for the ride is everybody else as they are buoyed by his great play. And obviously the defense made big plays in that second half too. Don't want to overlook them. But now here you go. You got yet another test. And we pointed to these two games in the first four games of the schedule all summer long. What's your record against LSU and Clemson? Could you possibly win them both? Because if you did, you should be in a great position to not only win the ACC, but go to the college football playoff. And here it is. Clemson hasn't looked like world beaters. They lose their first game right off the bat to Duke. Score was convincing. I don't think the game played out the way that it should have. Probably it was a one-score game. Probably. Either way, though. Could have gone either way. But now you know they're a little down. You know you're going to get the best version of them. 
especially in that first quarter, right? They're going to come out hype. They're going to have a plan in place, which may get them on the board early. Everybody seems to against us. And so, you you, you know, you, you know you're going to have to respond to that. You're going to have to deal with that. And the person you turn to in those moments isn't a defensive back. It's not even a defensive end. It's not an offensive lineman. It's always the quarterback. Do I believe in this guy? Do I trust this guy? Does this guy make plays when we have to make plays? Is he able to calm everybody down? Does he go and answer a score from Clemson with a score of our own? And then we ease into the game and we let the best team win. I think Florida State has upwards of 12 guys that are going to get drafted in some shape or form on this roster right now that are contributing to this football team. That's more than what Clemson will have in the upcoming draft. Florida State has rapidly transformed the roster to be at a place where they're not just equipped to deal with Clemson. They're probably better than Clemson. Yeah, I think especially when you look at the two deep, you know, and if you want to talk about one through 85. Yeah, it, Clemson's it, deeper at one it, through 85. Yeah, I think they that's are. probably true they and, are. and developed and all that kind of stuff. But that's not what this game's about on Saturday. This game's about the top two lines of the depth chart and what can you do. And I think if you just want to oversimplify it and say, I saw this in the chat earlier, but who's better, LSU or Clemson? Well, LSU is a better football team than Clemson. And I don't think it's terribly close. I think LSU is two scores on a neutral field better than Clemson. But the game's being played there. There's a desperation for Clemson, and their offense is going to test a different part of our defense and the integrity of what we do than LSU's did. LSU is perimeter, and then the quarterback runs. Mm -hmm. You know, and, And Clemson's about the middle of the field. How do your linebackers do? How do your safeties do? That would be the nature of my concern. It's the biggest concern that we have. I I mean, there's no getting around that. You may have to win. If the weather's nice, you may end up having to win a slugfest. You may have to win a game in which both teams are scoring in the 30s. Yeah, the question is, um, I would also say, you know, how fully healthy are the linebackers? That's I haven't been to practice this week. That's nothing about that. It's just when you subbed them out last week, perhaps it was for the flu bug that's going around the team. Apparently what's going around town is lengthy. Oh, it's everywhere. My wife works in the school system. Everybody's sick. And and but it's lengthy to come back from. Mm. You know, like every snap matters now when you got a two back set that's with those two guys. Now it, it gets eliminated really quickly, that set, if you go up big yourself or you win first down. But I, I want to see those two things. The thing that I'm getting more confident in, to your point, as the week goes on, is that our offense is going to move the ball. I feel better and better about that the more I look um, at the at the one piece of evidence we have, which is the Duke game. I think they're going to be able to run the ball traditionally if they're uh, tough enough to do it. But I, I think it's going to be there. We've got to be decisive as backs. We've got to be decisive on the O-line. Would really help to have 53 anchoring that thing in the center. Would really help matters in terms of communication and yeah. assignments yeah, yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. being sound. But I'm not overwhelmed by what I saw out of Clemson's defense against Duke. So I think they're going to be able to move the ball. The one thing I was sure of when I got up on Monday morning, said it on the air, said it to you privately, said it to anybody that's asked me whether it's on the record or off. I mean, I will go ahead and let you know that, I mean, I think Florida State will move the ball in this game. I, I, it's Mike is dependable from a game plan standpoint and usually coming up with something unique for each opponent. Uh, he has proven that. Now, no coach bats a thousand. Guys have bad games. I don't think coach, I don't think coach had a great weekend last weekend. I don't think he was at his best either on Saturday. But there were a lot of things that conspired to to have that be the difficult game that it turned out to be. And not all of it was because of Florida State weakness. Some of it was just strange. You just throw the ball to the other team uh, if you're Lawrence Toafili and just give them a walk-in touchdown, then you can't pick up a squib kick. If those two things don't happen, Florida State blows BC out. But they did happen. And so maybe it's the kind of attention getter that you needed. Maybe it is. But offensively, I think Florida State, the same team that goes through these stretches where they score in bunches, like they did in that BC game, actually, that team has been very consistent. That unit has been very consistent. The thing that gives me a lot of confidence about what this offense is going to do is is I think Clemson, this is a hypothesis, could be proved wrong by the end of the first quarter, but I think Clemson needs to get pressure on the quarterback by bringing extra bodies, by blitzing. And you don't blitz Jordan. You just don't. That's not a good idea. Not a good way to live. He knows where to go with the ball been tested LSU last year offered him enough of the kitchen sink for him to think about where do I go with the ball under any circumstance because that was multiple what they were doing it's what Clemson is Clemson's very multiple mm-hmm. they might get home once or twice and fool you yeah they're not but, a terrible team but generally well I'm, but in terms of fooling Jordan but generally speaking you don't blitz that kid he's not affected by going that. back to last year the, the game that Florida State won against LSU last year which a lot of people picked against the Knowles 
uh, was because they didn't think Jordan would be able to recognize what LSU's defense filled with athletes. It's a fair theory. Was attempting to do, right. And then I texted you in the first quarter and went, oh, my God. He knows. He sees the matrix. It's happening. We're watching it right before our eyes. He's pre-snapping the hell out of this team. They're dead. And really, that's when he took the massive step forward. From that point, what he needs to be better at this weekend, we all know about the underneath stuff. If it's open, take it. Like, okay, understood. The thing that I'm actually concerned about that there's been a consistent problem with the first three games is some of those downfield shots are not as accurate as they were last no, year. No, they haven't been. And and I've criticized him for selection in terms of uh, target, and I've criticized him for inaccuracy. Jordan's had an up-and-down career when it comes to accuracy. Uh, he can be very, very good on certain throws, which we've always seen. Outside the numbers yeah. always. Yeah, yeah. The, but where he elevated his game the most besides pre-snap was the ability to step into throws, hit your back foot, and let it go down the seam. Um, those kinds of plays were big for us last year. He's got to hit those again, and I think they'll open up the middle of the field, which changes the game big time. Um, I'm going to stick with it. I said it uh, on Tuesday or maybe Monday. I can't remember which. I just think it's a big tight end game. I said it last night when we did the interactive. You went out and changed your room. You changed your room to have three, three and a half legitimate targets there at tight end, uh, and, and you've got guys that are not just plus players, but they're playmakers there. So I think all three play a role in this game, and I think that's probably a lot to overcome. Uh, I think lots of people will be worried about Johnny Wilson. Lots of people will worry about Keon Coleman. Those are legitimate weapons. I think it's hard to be able to shut that down without leaving something else open, and I think Correct. those tight ends are the, are the key to the game.